What's up guys, welcome back to Unreal Dev Hub. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a cell shader material that you can use in your games. Let's jump in. In your content drawer, let's create a new material. We'll call this M underscore simple cell shader. Let's double click to open up. So as we can see here, what we're going to do is set a series of colors that we can use in our material. So in our graph, let's press and hold three on our keyboard and left click, which is the hotkey to create a constant three vector. We can also right click and say constant three, but I like the shortcut and you will too. So we'll right click and say convert to parameter. That way we can use this in our material instance to control this value easily. We'll call this color a. I'll control C on my keyboard and I will control V once and I will control V one more time. So I'm going to right click here, convert to parameter, call this color B, right click, convert to parameter, color C. So we have these three colors, A, B, and C. Just like our example, we'll right click and or we'll left click and go down to default value. And we're going to change this value to red. We're going to change the value of B here in the left to white. And we will keep color C as black. Now let's right click and we will type in uh, lerp underscore three color. So we're going to click this and we're going to drag this into A, this into B, this into C. And so this is what we're going to use to linear interpolate, much like a standard lerp like this, which is L and left click. But we're going to, instead of changing between two values with an alpha value, we're going to lerp between three values. So now that we have that, we need our, uh, we need our alpha value. So we're going to use what is called a Fresnel function. So if we right click and type Fresnel, F-R-E-S-N-E-L. Uh, this is what we're going to use. And this is what's going to, if we start previewing the node, uh, we can see this visualization, which has this sort of glow around the outside. And once we start to plug values in, we'll see how this affects our material. So I'm going to press and hold S on the keyboard and left click, which is going to be my shortcut my hotkey to make a scalar parameter. So I'll type in exponent in, I'll control C, control V, and we're going to name this base reflect, sorry, I'm gonna click in here, base reflect fraction in, and we're just keeping these, uh, these names here. And so I'll copy this value over here, which is five, this is 0.04, We'll change these in just a moment, but I'm going to drag this in here, drag this in here, and I'm going to pull off of here and say linear gradient, and we'll just create these and then we'll go back through with an explanation so you see what, you can understand what's happening. So I'll drag off of the V gradient and say multiply. I will create a new scalar parameter, S and left click. I will call this steps. I'm going to set this default value to two. I'm going to drag off here, put this into my B. I'm going to drag off here and type floor. And I'm going to pull off floor and I'll say divide. And I'm going to drag my steps into divide. And so we'll take a break right here. So this is what we're going to use as our alpha value for our LERP. And if I right click here and say start previewing node, I can see first that primarily there's a white outline around our sort of mostly black circle. So steps is going to be how we are creating different values uh, and basically creating a series of bands in our Fresnel function. So if we start previewing up here, we can see how the gradient is affected by these values here. And we'll see this even greater in our material instance. But now if I stop previewing node, I can drag divide into alpha and alpha 
into base our uh, lerp into our base color and we'll see the beginning of our material as it should be colored so now just one more minor minor step what we're going to do is down here we're going to pull off of our v gradient and we'll type in cheap contrast hit return and I'm going to create a new scalar parameter. So S on my keyboard, left click, and I'm going to type in contrast. We'll set this default value to one. I'm going to pull this into contrast and I'm going to pull off and I will say lower. What this is doing is basically, um, so if we see our cheap contrast, we see this white band and this is basically just going to differentiate uh, and floor the value. So make this uh, anything below uh, 0.5 black and anything above white so that we have a crisp band here. Uh, and then we're going to, and then the portion, the reason we're using this is basically to give ourselves a very crisp edge to this material. And I'm going to drag off here and I will say linear interpolate return and we are going to drag our color C over here. We'll copy and paste it just so that we're not dragging across our graph. We're gonna keep things clean. Drag this into my B. And then we're going to drag this floor value into our alpha. And then now when we switch this value for this value, we'll see a very crisp outline pop up around the edge. See there's the black outline now, which is very nice. And we can use our contrast value to make that even thicker. So we're going to change the values uh, just to some defaults, which we'll see and be able to edit in our material instance. I'll change this to 0.75. I'm going to change this to 0.2. And then we're going to change our steps just to two. And so steps is basically saying, how many bands do we have between red and black? The contrast is basically gonna help us change the thickness of our outside band. And then these two values are gonna change uh, values related to the Fresnel material function. So I'll save and then we'll go test this out in our level. All right, so I have a series of our mannequin meshes here. If we want to grab these, you can go up to your content drawer at the top level and type in Manny. You can filter by your skeletal mesh. So I'll grab SKM Manny, drag him out here, and we will go, we're going to browse to our material up here with our little magnifying glass. I'm going to right click and I will say create material instance. I'll call this, I'll give this an an underscore purple and I'm going to double click and open it up and we have all of these different material parameters that we've created so all of these colors and these scalar values are the ones that we created in our material graph so for instance exponent in here can now be edited as a variable in our material instance so when we control it here it's specific to this material instance and what I'm going to do is first, we'll just change this color to purple and I'm going to browse to it here, go to our level. And then in our details panel, we will set our materials on many so that we have this nice purple material. And then we'll go, we'll put these side by side so we can see the direct relationship between our updates and our specific mesh instead of just this preview. And you can also, you know, for the record, use this material mesh down here to see our skeletal mesh. But right now I'm just going to use uh, the in editor version. So I like the values that I have personally, but you can use the exponent, the contrast will change the sort of thickness of that black edge. The exponent in will also change some of the values related to the Fresnel. So something like that might be good. And then I like a fewer number of steps. So you see right now it just goes purple, white, black. If I were to change this to let's say five or four, there's a greater number of 
transition. So here you can really see this uh, this transition between purple now and there's basically 15 steps of coloration between purple and black. So for my for my use, I like something closer to two. I just like purple, white, black. That's what I like. And you can choose what looks best for your geometry. But feel free to update these values. I'm going to keep them as my default, but edit them as necessary for your geometry. And I hope you enjoyed today's video as always. And if you enjoyed, please like and subscribe for more Unreal Engine 5 content and tutorials. Thanks all. Have a great day.